In this video, I will show you how to create a 3D agency roadmap just like Iman Gadji's last video. And I really like this new style. It's almost like a 3D movement. And if you want to learn more about this new style, then do join my masterclass in which I do a deep dive on this new style. In my masterclass community, you will get more in-depth lessons, sales lessons, live Q&A calls, potential clients, and of course, one of the most important things, like-minded people that all want to help out. Now let's jump into it. So let's look at the animation first. As you can see, this roadmap pops up with this icon, this navigator icon also. We see this really cool text animation. The line will continue and we will have some 3D camera movements. Later on, there's even this 3D blur effect. Maybe I will do this in this video or I'll do it in a part two if people ask for it. Now let's start creating the layout first. And first I just use the pen tool to draw a basic shape. Make sure the fill is off and the stroke is set to seven pixels. And you do this by clicking on the fill, setting it to none. There we go. Now make sure nothing is selected and then just click, hold shift and then click again. Then again, click here, click here, click here and click here and we have our basic shape you can adjust it a bit to your liking but as you all can see it's not rounded and we can easily do that by going into the shape by going into add and add a round corner to this then open the round corners and increase the radius by a lot maybe set it to 100 a bit more maybe even like 120 or something let's see what this looks like it's exactly what we want i'm just gonna move it a bit and this is great now let's add these steps along the way so we're gonna put one here maybe two here maybe three here we can choose that later on but let's create them first i'm first gonna make an ellipse by holding down on the rectangle and going into the ellipse make sure nothing is selected then just drag this out so something like this we can always press V to select it and reposition it a bit. I'm first gonna duplicate this and set a fill to this. Doesn't matter which color. And I'm just call this masker and we need that later on. I'm just gonna turn that off for now. That's great. Now for the other one, I actually want a gradient around it. And that's actually quite simple. We can just go into add and then gradient stroke, going into the gradient stroke and then editing the gradient. Now for this to work, we actually need to turn the stroke off. So set it to none. And then we need to increase the stroke width into the gradient stroke uh, to maybe something like this, like 10 and then editing the gradient. I'm just gonna select some colors and you can choose whatever you want. And maybe something like blue to maybe more like a pink purplish color. I think that's quite cool, something like this. That's great. We can uh, actually change this name to gradient marker and then we can put the masker beneath this and then we can do two things or we just turn the masker on change the fill to the background color and this will basically make sure that the line is not visible as you can see or we can use it as a mat and whatever you prefer let's keep it the background color for now but i can actually also add a background i'm gonna do that now so let's create a new layer solid and make it basically black and then maybe a bit bit less like maybe a bit like a dark gray and let's also change the fill of the masker we can still use this as a mat later on for now i'm gonna add the arrow and that's really easy to do we can just go into the pen tool and we can literally just draw a shape like this there we go maybe something like this just make sure nothing is selected and then just draw a arrow like this there we go something like that i'm gonna adjust it a bit so it's a bit more nice something like that and then change the fill to a gradient linear gradient then go into the fill and let's reset this a bit let's delete this middle point let's change the first color to maybe something like this but then a bit darker and then the last color i'm gonna eye drop that to the background but then also maybe a bit darker something like that just make sure this is under it and we can even call it like arrow or pointer or something and there we go we have the arrow now of course we need the number two i'm just gonna set number one let's change this font and let's change the fill color to something like off-white and let's reposition that a bit i'm also gonna resize it a bit maybe something like that that will work now let's add the text and for the top text we can just use top text here there we go let's let's move that a bit and make sure the paragraph is set to left so we can change that later on and for the bottom text you can just duplicate this move it to the bottom and then just change the color to maybe like a darker gray resize it a bit something like that 
Make sure the alignment is a bit better and we can always make it more perfect later on you know the drill now this is of course really cool but you also want to know how to animate it so let's animate this first and then we'll go into the navigator icon uh, first this number i'm going to use a track mat so click on nomad and change it to masker which is the thing at the bottom just make sure that the masker is back on and then what we can do is go into position and move this down and what we can even do if we want to is move it below our gradient and as you can see it pops up like this really cool such a cool effect and we can literally just position it first set a keyframe and then later on make it pop up like this for the circle itself i'm just going to open that and add a trim path to this make sure our masker doesn't have a stroke so i'm going to set that to none go to the gradient marker back again and then we can animate the end now as you can see it's really cool but we basically want to start it at the top and then make it go to the bottom now you can do that by setting both the start and the end to 50 percent then animating it setting a keyframe then set the end to zero and the start to 100 percent and now if you play this, you can see it starts at the same point. Now we want it to start at the top. I think that's a cooler effect. We can easily do that by changing the offset. And you just change the offset to 180 degrees. It will start at the top, as you can see, and then it will just animate. Now, of course, we can also easy ease this by right clicking and then easy ease. And we can go into the toggle switches and then add motion blur to this, which will make it way cleaner. Now, once this animation is there, we can, of course, animate the arrow in. And I would just do that by using a standard position keyframe. So just a position keyframe. And then you can just move it from the left to the right. Just make sure that this arrow is beneath our masker. So it won't be visible in the beginning. Of course, you also have to easy ease this, change the timing a bit, but then you have a cool animation. Now for the text, it's actually really easy to do this. And we can just use the built-in decoder effect and it's called decoder fade in. Just double click it, press U to see our keyframes. Let's move this a bit because these keyframes are a long time <laughs> behind each other. I'm just gonna move this a bit, see how these keyframes, if this is too quick or not. But as you can see, it's the decoder effect. It's really easy to do. Now for the bottom text, we can do the same. And if you have an icon, you can do the same too. You just have to make sure that it's a font. So for example, even if I have a dollar sign like this and I add the effect to it, let's move this a bit closer, the keyframes. As you can see, it will scroll through all these characters before ending on our dollar sign. Great effect to use in your projects. Now let's move this over a bit so I have a bit of room to play with and let's go to the next part. Now for the other numbers, we basically made sort of a template. We can easily just select everything we created and then just duplicating it. And then we just move this to the top and to make this a bit more easy, I would just select everything, link it to one object so we can move, for example, this arrow around and have everything linked to it. Just press U to see your keyframes go to the keyframes and make sure that the position is selected. Now I can just move this over uh, maybe to here, for example, and then the whole animation will be here. Now for this part, I would change this around. Now to make it to the other side, I'm just gonna unlink everything again, right click on the arrow, then go into transform, flip horizontal. Now of course I need to change the keyframes a bit because it needs to pop out to the left side. And let's set the first keyframe to a bit better. There we go. And then we just have to move the text to the other side, just drag it out there. There we go. And then we have the other side. Change the number, change the text, and you have your second step. Now let's create the navigator icon. Now for this, I'm just gonna use the pen tool, make sure nothing is selected. And I'm just gonna basically create a simple shape and we can use this line for it. So basically I'm just gonna set a point here, set a point here, and make sure these points are somewhat next to each other. And there we go, we have our navigator icon. If you want a middle point, you can even add it by just clicking in the middle and maybe just dragging this over a bit, something like that. It already has a gradient, which is quite cool. Of course, you can add deep glow or a normal glow to this. And now to animate this, we can actually use our path that we created, except there's one issue. And that is because we use the effect to round it, we can't use this path. So we first have to duplicate it, change the stroke to one pixel, then go to layer, auto trace, settings are fine, just press okay, and it will create a mask. And what we can do is just open this mask, open this path, press Command C on Mac or Control C on Windows, then go into our navigator icon, press P for position, 
select the position and paste it. Now I'm just gonna delete the top mask and what happens if you play it now, you will see that it will basically go over the path two times. And that's not perfect, but we can easily adjust this. You can just go to the start where it's at the start, which is here. Let's open the transform and let's open the position. Now we can just delete the front part like that. It will automatically be adjusted in timing. You can even set a keyframe here and delete the others at the beginning, something like this. There we go. So it starts here, then it will go, it will go, it will go till it's almost at the end or it's at the end. And then we can delete the last couple of keyframes too. There we go. If you want to adjust the size a bit or the timing, you can just drag this out. It will automatically be like resize, but we have a perfect animation. But as you can see in the corners, it doesn't rotate automatically. And there is a way to do this. You can just right click the layer, go into transform and then auto orient orient along path set okay now as you can see it's not <laughs> nicely oriented and we need to adjust the rotation a bit uh, maybe just set it to 90 i think that should work and let's play this now from the start there we go that's really cool now of course i think it goes a bit too quick we can drag that out we can add some motion blur to this we can even easy ease it but as you can see, it's a really cool animation. Now let's go to the last part and that's the camera movement and some extra overlay. Now for the camera movement, the easiest is to just make everything 3D. So just select this 3D, I can drag this down, except the background layer. Now, as you can see, the navigator icon disappeared and that's because we need to rotate it again. So go into the shape, press R for rotation. We might need to adjust this a bit. I'm just going to set the Y rotation to 92 and to the X rotation also. I'm just going to set the Y rotation to zero and the Z rotation to 180 degrees. That should work. Let's play this quickly. And in some cases it doesn't work and then you just need to go to transform and then auto orient and then set it to off then we just have to rotate it ourselves unfortunately which is actually not that hard now for the camera movement i'm just going to create a layer new camera i'm going to use a two node camera because it's actually quite easy just press ok just go into p for position let's zoom in a bit and then maybe rotate it a bit by changing the position and as you can see, we'll create this really cool depth effect. You can even make it zoom in a bit more. Let's maybe rotate it a bit more. And if you now want to align it, and this is the trick, we can just go to layer new null object, link it to the null. And what's really cool is that if we now press P for position, make it 3D and change the position, it's actually really easy to orient the camera, move the camera a bit, maybe add some movement to the camera, basically making it making it orient around the object really slow. And we can use the null then to uh, basically make sure that it's aligned well. We can even keyframe this null object to make it move along the path. And I'm gonna show you two secret tricks. One is using multiple cameras. And this is something you see a lot in the latest Imangaji videos. It's just duplicating a camera, making sure that this one is cut off by hitting Alt bracket and going into this camera and hitting Alt bracket again. Then press P for position, and then for example, we'll move it to the other side. Let's uh, go to this side then. And now if you keep this on active camera, and we just play this, you first see this camera, then it will move to the other camera, and then we can even cut this off and make it go back to the other camera. And it will make this really cool effect, especially when this is animated. And now another secret, and that's a grid overlay. I think this is just done with stock footage. You can actually create a really easy grid yourself. And we can do that by creating a new solid, layer new solid. But I'm just going to use dark gray for now. And to create a grid, I'm just going to use a ellipse. Make sure the fill is set to like a dark gray. Also make sure that it's not a gradient. So go into the fill options, make it a solid color first and changing the fill to like a dark gray. Then zoom in and make a really tiny circle, something like this. Maybe we even need to make it smaller after this. We can add a repeater and we've done this trick before, basically creating a simple repeater set the copies to 200. Maybe I'm gonna change the fill to a lighter gray so we can at least see what we're doing. This is perfect. Set the offset to maybe minus 50. There we go. 
then go into the transform and set the first position value to something really close, something like this, maybe. Now we're just gonna duplicate this repeater by pressing Command D on Mac or Control D on Windows. Go into the transform, set the first value to zero and the second value to 20. And we have our grid. Now, as you can see, it's way too thick. It needs to be way smaller and it also doesn't fully cover the image. And to make it cover the image, I'm just gonna move this up a bit, something like that. Let's just move it here. There we go. And let's make it a bit more tiny. I'm also gonna add a bit more space by setting this to 35, maybe 25, 25. Changing the fill color to maybe something darker. Press OK. And we have our grid. Now what I would do is render this separately and adding it as an overlay because because it's quite a heavy effect. And then with some small adjustments, you will get something like this. I would love to dive deeper into this style. And I think I will just drop a comment if you'd like to see that. Don't forget to join my masterclass. Link is in the description to see a deep dive of this. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for all the support. And then I'll see you next time. Bye.